So at this point, I have my real device set up and my virtual device, just so that I can use either one. That's all you needed to do for the moment. What we need to do now is um, start to set up a project, a, a Cordova project, that will let us um, use basically a template so that we don't start over every time we're going to create a template in Cordova. This template, which is going to be very cool, it'll just be a folder. And this folder will include everything that our project needs to then create future projects. Well, that's the definition of a template, isn't it? And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with, uh, with my instruction number five. Number five, Cordova Workflow 1. I'm going to copy that to my desktop, and I'm going to open it. I'll give you an overview of it, and then we'll actually do it. And then I'll give you other handouts, of course. So let's open up number five, Workflow 1. So after all our components are set up, we will create a basic app to be our template for future apps. So the setup is that on your own computer you would need to install uh, Android Studio, you would need Java, you would need uh, Node, Ant, all of that stuff. That's our setup. In addition to virtual device or real device. Once all those seven things are done, then we can get to the nitty-gritty which is using Cordova which is using Cordova to type those commands to create a project, to build a project, to run a project. Once that's all done, okay, then we have a template. We have this template that then we can use to, to bring back the project from last month. We can use that template to then create a brand new project. Maybe I want to make a game. Maybe I want to make a brand new project that is, uh, uh, you know, some other sort of app, my next social media app. But this template is what we need. So the instructions here are giving us a little cheat sheet on the command prompt, the different command prompt commands. So to bring up the command prompt, let's go to the start menu, of course. Start menu, and then um, search here command, or I'm um, search for node. Search for node, and that'll give us node command prompt. Don't open node.js, that's different. You want to open node.js command prompt. That's the Node branded version of the command prompt with a few extra little things. So you want to launch the Node command prompt. The cheat sheet tells us, okay, clear screen, CLS, change directory, CD, go back a directory, CD dot dot, DIR to view the directory. Uh, I mentioned this one and it's going to be very useful as time goes on the up arrow on the keyboard brings back the last command. It cycles back through all your previous commands. So you don't have to retype the last command. You just press up and it brings it back, the last command. You press down and you go forward in your command history. I forgot to put another little extra command here, but we'll see it in a moment. And then of course to switch between drives. I've got a, I've got a D drive, I think. And my, I can confirm that, actually it's F. On my computer, I can confirm that my flash drive is on F. Yours may be D or F or G or H, who knows. The way you take a quick look to know what it is, you open a plain old computer window, explore, and then just look, my Kingston 8 gig is on F. So I'm going to be substituting the command, of course, F, because I'm on the F drive, not the D drive, which my instructions say. And so what I want to do here, number three, decide where you'll save your Cordova projects. When you open Node.js command prompt, you'll probably be in your user folder. And here I'm saying let's create a folder, but actually we're going to change this instruction a moment, uh, for a bit, I mean, because if we create a folder to store our apps in our user folder, that means we're storing our projects on this computer, which when you turn it off, you'll lose everything. So we're going to change the instruction a little bit that we're going to do this on our flash drive. Obviously, we're going to save, save our projects on our flash drive. So I'm on the command prompt, my home directory. I want to switch to my flash drive, which for me is F. Capitalization actually doesn't really matter, even though my instruction said capital F. Lowercase f will work. But you want to switch to your drive. Mine is F. The name of the drive, colon, enter. 
and then it takes me to the F drive. If it didn't work, if I'm trying to go to my, uh, I don't know, J drive, it'll say there's no J drive. So that's how you know it didn't work. But I'm on my F drive, DIR, to confirm. That's on my, that's on my flash drive right here. Let's see if everyone on their flash drive. So now we're going to create a directory. We're going to create a folder here to store all of our apps. So further my instructions here. Uh, I guess I didn't mention it up on here. I should have. But I'm saying here, to create a directory in the command prompt, you type the command mkdir, make directory. And then space the name of the directory, which we can call anything we want. But one thing is, we're used to using the nice pretty interface where I can go to my drive, or I can go to my drive and I can right click new folder and I can create a folder called my amazing apps spring 2015 and I could do that very easily on Windows we're not going to use these kinds of names in the command prompt because you're gonna need to type that manually every time you want to open that folder and when you've got spaces you have to type the name of your folder in quotes, or else the command prompt will think cd my, not cd my amazing app spring 2015. It'll think you've ended the command with that space between the my and the amazing. And notice I misspelled amazing, so then I'm trying to type cd my amazing, cd my amazing. Why isn't it working? I misspelled amazing. So the point is, let's use as short as possible names when we work in the command prompt, because we're going to need to type that manually. So I'm on my F drive. I'm going to type mkdir, make directory, space, apps, the end, enter. I'm not going to type apps, spring 2015, campus 2. You know, I'm not going to type this crazy long name that would be perfectly fine on Windows. I'm going to just type a very short name, apps, dir. Just to confirm, I've got a brand new folder called Apps on my flash drive. CD space apps to, to change directory, to go into the directory, Apps. The command prompt tells me you're in, the, you're in your Apps folder, in your F drive. So my instructions. I'm in the apps folder. Then I'm going to type the Cordova create command so I, I can create a template project that I can then reuse multiple times. So this should look familiar. Cordova create basic com dot your last name dot template. That's a little mistake there actually. Um, I should have called that consistently template because we're calling it here template and we're calling it here template. Sorry. I was updating it a bit and I forgot that part. We used to call it basic, but it confused people. So we're going to change this. I'm going to make a new handout. But Cordova, create template, com dot your last name dot template, template app. So here, Cordova, create template. This is creating a folder in the apps folder called template space. We need a package name, a unique ID that differentiates your app from everyone else's app on the App Store. We will just go with com.yourlastname, whatever it is, dot the name of this project, which is template. Notice this is all lowercase space. The last option here is what's the name that's going to appear below your icon when it's actually on the device. And on here I will use then quotes, open quote, end quote. Press back on the key, back on the keyboard. And then in the quotes I can type template in a capital, with capital letters if I want. What am I calling it here? Template app. Template space app. We're using the quotes so that we can have spaces in our, in our, in our file names. 
if I didn't use that quote, it might think I've, it might not know the exact name that I'm talking about. Question. Uh -huh. I would ignore it for the moment. Um, what you should do, just ignore it, and then press up on the keyboard to bring back your last command and then type it again correctly. You can then delete it inside of the plain old windows because RM doesn't work on here just exactly. So just ignore that old one. So if you misspelled it, it's a good question. If you misspelled it, just ignore it, press up to bring back your command, type it correctly, and then we'll move on. Remove. But it doesn't exactly remove directories. It removes files. A directory is a little different. Press enter. Nothing happens until you press enter. You should get the feedback. Creating a new Cordova project. You can confirm DIR. New project template. So did everyone get a template project? Okay, so let's see here. Uh, huh, I thought, I thought I fixed all of these. So this one says CD basic. If you literally d did CD basic, you would get an error because there is no folder called basic. Our folder is called template. So CD template, CD space template. So I apologize, it's a little misspelling again in my handout. I thought I fixed it. But uh, CD template. Then Cordova platform add Android. We're about to add the Android code to our project. Cordova platform add Android. So it might take a little longer. It's going to connect officially to npmjs.org where it's got the code. It's going to download it, unzip it and stuff. Copying files, prepping it. As that finishes, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to add these plugins. We're going to activate the ability to use the camera, um, the file manager, all that cool stuff. So did everyone get eventually all of that installing and then it's done? So the reason, you might say, didn't we do this last time? We did. But we're doing it one more time to set ourselves up as this template file so we don't have to do it again over and over. Next time, all we really need to do, once we've got this template file in my apps folder, I just need to make a copy. I just need to make a copy in Windows. Make a, I, next time, I would just need to make a copy and I've got a, my project ready. It's, it's going to have the plugins. It's going to have the platform. It's going to have everything. We need to do some setup first. Now, I'm not asking you to type in all of those things there, and copying and pasting won't work from the PDF for some reason. So in the network folder, if you go back to the network folder, I've got a plain text file in there that you should copy. If you didn't copy it already last time, go back to the network folder, Cordova plugins text. That um, that I will copy to my desktop. And when you open that file, it's got all of the commands there. You just need to right click, select all, right click copy. In the network folder, it's the one called Cordova Plugins Text. Once you've copied it, you go back to the command prompt. Control V will not work, but right click, paste, will. Remember to enter. So we want to make sure we do that. It'll get 19 plugins and then we can go on. 
All right, so mine's still chugging along. What about you? Has yours finished? Chugging along. Okay. So while that's still working, um, what we've got here is um, an Android project, a project that's going to get all of these features, the camera, geolocation, etc. And we made a note, and I'll mention it again. Um, we we did Cordova platform add Android but another useful platform that I didn't write in the handout but that's why you want to make notes the other platform that we're also going to add is Cordova platform add browser remember that one so it's a couple of ways to test our project either in the Android device or in the web browser specifically Google Chrome if you don't have Google Chrome on your computer browser won't work because Android is a Google product, Google Chrome is a Google product. So if you've got Safari or Firefox, it's not going to work because Google never set it up that way. So you have to make sure you've got Google Chrome on your computer. And that's going to be actually very useful because we can use the good old Google Chrome or Firefox development tools uh, to help us debug our apps to see if the JavaScript is working. But we'll get to that later. Did everyone eventually get it all complete? Okay, let's go ahead and add the browser then. Cordova. Cordova platform add browser. This is relatively new. As I said, I've been doing this a few years, teaching this class. This is relatively new, and I thought this was very, very helpful for development because if we eventually do Cordova emulate Android or Cordova run Android, it takes a while. It takes a while to process it and put it up on my device or on my virtual device. But oftentimes doing Cordova run browser is much faster because it's all internal and it just works. So it's not in my notes, but make a note. That's also another platform that is useful to add. Enter, of course. It's going to set up the code and it's going to then make the browser compatible with all of the plugins that we've already installed. It might take a little moment also. Step 8, after, after we've gotten both platforms installed, step 8 is we would do a little build. So it's going to prepare all of the separate pieces of this puzzle 
It's going to prepare them so that we can then start to, to work with them. So almost there. Just uh, making it all compatible. That's why um, a time saver, we could have also have done Cordova, platform, add, Android, space, browser. We could have chained it together and it would have done it all at once. We added Android, then the plugins, then browser. Well, if we had done Android and browser at the same time and then did plugins, it might have gone a little faster. But you live, you learn. Did anyone ha has has yours finished yet? Has have you gotten your command prompt waiting yet? If you did, go ahead and do Cordova build. I'll catch up with you in a moment. You want to do Cordova space build? Because that's also going to take a moment. It's going to process all of this code, and the first time will always take a little while, and then after that, it'll go much faster. I'm gonna get mine to build. Once yours, once yours finishes the build, <coughs> when you finish the build process, um, when you finish your build process, uh, then try Cordova Run Browser. So mine's still going to be chugging along a little bit. But once yours is done, try Cordova Run Browser. I'm just putting it up there so I can show you something to type. Did you put in your driver? Did you put the driver for your device in all of them like you did last time? Well, right now they have the cut to install some stuff. Okay, no problem. Go ahead. They need the driver. Okay, so the question. 
When you do Cordova run browser, it's supposed to launch your project in the web browser. It's supposed to launch this basic project in the web browser. So let me catch up with you guys. Cordova run browser. If you get an error that browser is not found, that means you didn't install the browser. Yes, I just I couldn't type it in the black screen because it was building, so I typed it in the it's processing. You might get that pop up. I don't know why that comes up. We'll just ignore it. And I don't see any documentation online how to fix that. So just ignore it. And then eventually in the web browser, we get Apache Cordova. And it may or may not say connecting to device and it may or may not change. That's okay. But at the least, we want the project loaded up like that. So Cordova run browser. Did that work for everyone? Mine took a while too, so I would just keep waiting. Yeah. Got an error? Well, after you typed Cordova Run Browser, a pop up will happen perhaps and you click OK, and then the next one is the browser. Well, you only have to connect browser. You need to type Cordova Run Browser. Because it's no longer a plain website, it's a it's an app. So that's what we have to do is go to the wrong browser. Oh, right. so, yes. Okay, so this is just a proof of concept that that was the project loading up there. Maybe you have already also explored this. What about Cordova emulate Android? We did that last time as well, didn't we? And I believe it's in the handout here. Cordova emulate Android. What that should do then is it should load this project in that virtual device that I've got hanging around right here. So we're just going to get used to. We have three, basically three final commands that we could do. Cordova run browser, Cordova emulate Android, and Cordova run Android. 
So when this is done, I'll do Cordova run Android, which will put it on my real device. So we have three ways to look at our project. The ideal way, of course, is a real device, but we have the virtual and we have the browser. The, brow uh, the, the virtual device does not pop up automatically. If it's not in view, you're going to say, what happened? You have to remember yourself to bring it into view, just to put it up like that. And then eventually, launching app, and then I get it in the device, which is actually slightly different, but there it is, Apache Cordova. And lastly, Cordova, run Android. Run Android if you've got a properly set up device. See what you say? De deploying, it's using by deploying to device. If it's not, if he doesn't see a device, that line is going to say deploying to emulator, I believe. And then it's going to zoom by. But uh, eventually, then it's going to pop up on my, on my device here. We've done this before, we're going to keep doing it, but you're going to need to be able to be comfortable with this. If I'm going to say, test your project. I'm not going to literally always be saying Cordova run Android. You're going to need to figure out, is it going to be on my browser? Is it going to be on my virtual device or my real device? And then if this loads up here, Estella, can you confirm? Does that say Cordova Android? Yes. There we go. Again. Question? Okay, just one moment. Um, so this was our, this was our setup. Um, this is what you're going to need to be able to do flawlessly from today. You had that, you know, I, I, I threw, uh, it was sink or swim. I said, okay, you do it. And then a lot of you were able to do it okay, and then some of you needed a little help. And now that we've done it one more time together, you're going to need to be able to do this every time you come in. Next time, virtual device ready to go or real device ready to go. We're going to take our first break, make sure everyone's caught up, and then we're going to do the second part of this setup. We've got this template file, but we also need to set up the config.xml file. That's an important part of our app. This controls all aspects of our app. And we need to make that sure we need to make sure that's set up right. So I'm gonna turn the printer back on. It's 7.15. Take a break until 7.25, and then we'll go on.